Okay, so I got the Track IR Track Clip Pro, I think is what it's called. And it's just three IR LEDs that then the the camera tracking system tracks these rather than when you buy the track IR system just by itself. It comes with a hat clip that has three reflectors and then there are two IR LEDs in the camera that blast out IR and it just picks up the reflections. So rather than having to worry about picking up on the reflections, this outputs its own light so you have a little bit more uh, reliability as far as the camera not picking up on rogue reflections from something else in the room that could be uh, reflecting what the, the IR light back. The problem is, at least with the way that I've uh, built the headset to start, is the headset battery is a 1S, I think it's a LiPo pack. It might be lithium ion, I'm not sure. And that's going to give you nominally 3.7 volts, but a full charge is about 4.2 volts. Not the USB spec. This plugs into your, a USB port in your computer. Uh, when, it, when you first buy it, it's got a long cable and a USB plug. So the USB spec is 5 volts. So if you power this off of 3.7 or 4.2 fully charged battery, your brightness is going to be lower because your current flow will be lower because I haven't changed the resistance in this circuit. So Ohm's law, V equals IR, if your voltage is lower and your resistance stays the same, your current therefore has to go lower as well to balance out the equation. The brightness of these is proportional to the current going through them. So it works, but I've had some problems with having to sit really close to the camera for it to pick up the IR light emitting from these LEDs to the point where as the battery slowly drains or discharges in the headset, I have to get closer and closer to the camera because the brightness is getting lower and lower. So uh, I'll either have show it already or I'll be putting up a video for the whole configuration of how this is wired into the headset. Uh, but I used just standard JR servo plugs because it's what I had a bunch of laying around for making this modular so I can plug it into the headset and remove it, which makes this kind of easy for testing. I can just take another, uh, I guess this would be mail, right? It's a sh covered shielded mail, but the contacts themselves are the male part, so this would be the female. I've always wondered that. If anybody knows, when you have a shielded connector, this goes inside of the connector, but the contacts themselves are male contacts. So which which side's male, which side is female? Anyway, having this connector makes it easy to have now some test leads where we can output some energy. Let's see what we got going on here. So this little guy, I bought a 10 pack of um, voltage, DC voltage boost converters. And what we need to do is take the 3.7 to 4.2 volts that comes out of the battery. It's just a 1S lithium battery. And we need to boost that up to something that the um, IR, track IR LEDs can use because they're designed for... 5 volt USB. I could take apart the module and swap out the resistors in there so you get more current, more brightness, but I don't feel like tearing apart the, the plastic tubes that hold the LEDs are quite fragile. And I don't want to take it apart and break it and not be able to put it back together. So instead of changing the resistance, and they could just be, they could be super small resistors on a board inside of there as well. And I don't feel like messing with that. So I'm just going to boost the voltage up instead. We're just going to adjust this pot until we get the output voltage that we need around 5 volts. So this is going to be our voltage source simulating the battery. 
And we're gonna do, let's see, voltage and positive. And the nice thing about getting a 10 pack is you can do some testing and not worry about breaking the thing that you're testing. Because if you do, it's no big deal. You just grab it on the one. And these are, I think it was like 10, 10 or $11 for a 10 pack. So not a big deal. All right, that's about, I think is, as good as I'm gonna get, I'm gonna drop it a little bit low because we're at the low end of the voltage output from the battery, or the, the power supply, but simulating the battery. So right now the power supply is at 3.7. I'm gonna bring it up to 4.2 just to see what this does when the battery voltage is, is up for a fully charged battery. Wow, it stays solid. That is impressive. I thought for sure that the input voltage would have affected the output voltage. What happens if I turn it off and then back on? It stabilizes right at 4.92. That is impressive. Let's see, what's the input rating? How high can I go? 2 to 24 volt input and 5 to 28 output. Okay, well, let's see what happens when I drop it all the way down. I'm at two volts right now on the power supply. Actually, I'm at one, one five. Okay, at one five, it starts to get a little flaky. One seven. Yeah, one seven, one eight is right about where it starts to output proper. So a little bit below the spec. I'm, I'm glad they gave two, just so you don't buy it designing it for two volts input and then it being a little flaky. Where is it? Where does it start to pick up? All right, five one input. Okay, so five one five two, we get a huge jump. So from three seven to about five volts, it's fairly stable around four nine four nine five. As soon as we hit five or five right now, if we go five one, it jumps up. 5.2, it jumps up even more. 5.3, five, 5.5, five, five, 6 volts input, 7 volts input, okay. So it's, I mean, that makes sense. Actually, it makes a ton of sense, because it's not a buck converter, it's a boost converter. So if you're putting in a voltage that is higher than you set out, it's just going to meet the input voltage and rise with it. So if I go up to 8.8, eight, I should have 8.8. Eight. Okay, so that works as expected. You have a, an input voltage. You can then boost it up to a specified output voltage. If your input changes and meets your output, then your output will rise linearly, lockstep with the input. So long as the input is lower than your desired output, it maintains a fairly stable output. So let's go back to, let's just do four, four. So at four, four, I'm holding almost exactly what I said originally when it was three, seven input. So let's just try to adjust this up to five volts, five volts right there. So long as my power supply stays below five volts, it's fairly stable. I just hit five volts now on the power supply and it's gonna to start to rise with it. Very cool, okay. Back down to, I'm two eight on the power supply now and this is holding steady output at within a hundredth of a volt of what, a couple hundredths of a volt of what I specified. So that should be perfect for my use cases. I'm just, my use case, I'm just powering LEDs. It doesn't matter that much what the output voltage is. So we're going to put our positive of this configured circuit. We've set it to 5 volts output. And the negative to the negative. And then just be sure not to short these alligator clips. Let's move these farther apart. Okay, so power supply coming in, simulating our battery. Um, 
let me get that set to a particular voltage. So we'll set that to, we'll say 3.7 volts, because that's going to be the lowest we'll have off of the battery. So 3.7 volts coming in, the pot's been adjusted so that the output voltage will be 5 volts, so long as the input is below 5. Anything above 5 volts on the input, the output will track. So I'm not going to put any sort of uh, over voltage protection on the circuit, because I'm never going to plug this into anything other than the battery on the headset, but it might be wise for building an actual product that you want to sell. You'd want to have over voltage protection so you don't throw whatever voltage over, over five volts into your LEDs and burn them up. They should now be powered. Yep. They're now being powered through this circuit. It's really hard to see there are there actually is a visible visible light component of the IR LEDs in the track clip pro so this is the output having gone through the voltage boost converter so we're running at five volts here and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reconfigure it back to the 3.7 volts and you can see the difference in brightness or at least I'll attempt to show the difference it's kind of hard to pick it up on camera because they are very 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 dim visible red LEDs and now I have it set up for the 3.7 volts I don't even know if you can pick those up they're so dim so off on off on I can see them with my eyes but it's super hard to tell that they're on and once more back to 5 volts going through the boost converter off on you can clearly pick them up in the camera now i can see them clear as day with my eyes off on so it's working all right so this little voltage boost converter is going to be perfect the one last thing i do want to check i mentioned is i want to see if there's any voltage drop across uh, this circuit when there's current being drawn. So those LEDs are on now. Let's see what our output voltage is. We had it set to almost exactly five. I think it dropped down to like 497 when the input was 3.7 volts. So 498. That's perfect. Let's boost the input up to 4.2. That'll be a fully charged battery. And we're putting out 498 still. So only a couple millivolt change with load applied 499 let's plug that back in four nine eight four nine nine this is perfect so next step is i'm going to cat out a little box for this and then i'm going to take uh some connectors and embed those in the box so that I can just put this chip into a little box. I'm probably even gonna make a little clip so the box will clip onto my headset. And then we will wire this into the output side, battery into the input, and be done. So I accidentally deleted uh, the recording I made of wiring this all up and putting it inside the box. I started with measuring the card and I printed a box to fit with holes for the plugs and then a spot to mount on the headset arm. I made this diameter a little bit too big so it didn't even come close to snapping on. So then version two, I made it slightly smaller, but I also had this circle extend all the way around. I think it was like 290 degrees. The battery in my mic also died. Uh, what I was explaining here was that the amount of plastic that wrapped around the headset was a bit too much and I couldn't fit it over the headset uh, so it actually snapped off and ended up being the same wrap as the original design. It still worked and snapped quite well though. Uh, here the, the box is a little bit too flimsy. It's only a millimeter wide. You can see it bends quite a bit uh, and then the lid didn't quite fit on as well either because it didn't leave enough clearance. There's actually a bit of a uh, sort of a 
a mortise that goes all the way around the edge and that wasn't enough to fit inside the box so the second round of printing i just added a little bit more clearance so that the lid would fit onto the box better and also so that the uh, i added another uh, bit another millimeter around the outside so that it would fit better and also a little bit more clearance for the card itself to actually fit in it wasn't big enough uh, it fit in the short dimension but in the long dimension once i had the wire soldered on it wouldn't fit inside the box here i'm just going to go ahead and open up the box to show the inside it's just a ton of hot glue uh, i could have done a much better job at designing a way to retain all of the components inside the box but because it is a one-off design there's no need for me to put that much more effort into making the card retain itself inside the box any more than uh, what hot glue does the plugs there are positioned at the, the right height so that i can plug in the headset on both sides and that pretty much wraps it up if you have any questions please drop a comment and i will do my best to answer them until next time thanks a lot folks